Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Miller. I'm the pastor here at First Lutheran Church in Lexington, North Carolina. And we welcome you to this fourth Sunday in Advent. This is the sermon that goes along with table worship for those who choose to worship in their homes around their tables during this time of pandemic. Um, and we welcome all, we welcome all to this place, even this virtual place, um, all are welcome in this time or place. 10.30 this morning, we will have children's time, a children's sermon, um, a Zoom link that goes along with the congregational email that came out this morning can get you to that place. It is for young people who would normally come forward for a children's sermon um, and an adult who can accompany them, that would, that would be helpful. Um, so we welcome all of those young people to that time at 10.30 this morning. And then at 11 o'clock, we will be outdoors for our outdoor worship service. Um, and that will be live on Facebook Live. Um, that will also include the Eucharist in, in the parking lot. And you can join us virtually for that also um, with just get together and comments and just touching in with folks to see how they're dur dur doing during this time. So we welcome all to that time also. But for now, let us focus our hearts and minds with our prelude this morning. Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a, va to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. 
But she was much perplexed by his words and pointed and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The room is filling out. Um, things are getting fuller as we prepare ourselves for the Christ that is to come. Um, and if you notice, here we are. Um, Jesus not quite here yet. Um, this is the custom that we have here at first is, is our nativity sort of builds as we get closer and closer. It's not till Christmas do we have the Christ child. We actually have the Christ child come in on Christmas Eve. We have four candles, four candles are lit as we get closer and closer. The wise men will not show up until Epiphany. Um, literally January the 6th, the last day of Christmas is the day of the Epiphany when the, when the wise men show. Um, and, and, but it's getting close. Um, and today, today is, is kind of Mary's day. Um, it is a day we think about Mary. And it's an important day, I think. Um, I think in a Protestant tradition, we have, have, in the fear of maybe appearing too Roman, we have ignored probably, in my opinion, the first disciple of the church. Um, I think she's the first of the apostles and disciples. She's the first witness. She's the bearer of Christ in the world. She is the one who God chooses. And I believe that that, that needs a day. It needs at least, a, at least one day. And today is that day when we think about Mary um, and who, who she is and what she means to us, the church. Um, I can tell you one thing. Um, Mary probably did not have blonde hair like our Mary has. Um, and I thought a lot about that. Um, Mary was probably looked a lot more Jewish than, than this Mary. But there is something to be said about um, seeing ourselves in Jesus and also seeing ourselves in Mary. Um, and I'll, I'll get to what, what that means. But, but today is the day we remember an, an angel, a, a Gabriel. It's funny because the popular, around this time, a popular thing is, Mary, did you know? And I've seen a meme that basically said, yeah, I kind of did know, uh, Gabriel told me. And, and there, is, there is an angel that can tell Mary that she's about to bear the salvation of the world. Um, so let us go back to that. And, and why do I say she is the first of us? She is the first of the proclaimers of the good news. She is the first to be chosen to bear Christ. And she becomes, in, in, in my opinion, the example of, of how we are to be 
as the church and as the people of God and as also the bearers of Christ. Um, here is this young girl, and we, we, we often overstate her age. I mean, she is at the very beginning of what would be considered the beginning of adulthood in the life of people in that area in that time. But gosh, she was young. We know that. And so was Joseph. They were, they were young people. Um, she's old enough to have children, but what does she really know about the world at this such a young age? And here comes this angel, and it's this amazing news of what she is about to enter into, what is about to happen. And, and the first thing she is told is she is the favored one. She's the one who God has chosen. Um, and that she is about to be pregnant, pregnant with the salvation of the world, pregnant of the one who is to redeem Israel, pregnant with the one who is to bring down the rich and lift up the poor, um, pregnant with the one who is about to overturn the world. And she's also finding out that she's gonna be pregnant before she's married. I mean, we'll even hear in the story itself that Joseph has to grapple with this. He has to grapple with all of the social realities of having a pregnant fiance, even to the point where he has to consider what, what's his next move. It will also take a dream and it will take a message in that dream from another angel who will say, no, 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 no. Protect this child. This child is important and protect this woman who is also important. And he will do that. So as Mary is receiving all of this news, right, at such a young age, is this good news or is this bad news? To be this young, to be unmarried, to be pregnant, and to realize you are the bearer of the salvation of the world, is this burden or is this blessing? Is this good news or is this bad news? And to me, as you read it, it sort of hinges how will Mary respond? And her response is, let it be. We will hear later just her overflowing of joy, you know. Blessed am I, blessed am I to bear this. My soul proclaims the greatness of God and my spirit rejoices. You have looked with favor upon your humble servant and you will lift up the low and you will cast down the high. Her, her response is joy. And her response is let it be. This is the Sunday that I will spend most of the day listening to the Beatles. And I know it probably has nothing to do with this. As a matter of fact, I think when Paul McCartney wrote the song, it had more to do with his mother, whose name was Mary, who had died. But how can you not hear Jesus? How can you not hear Mary in this song? When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. This is good. And this is great. This is hope. And this is love. And it has chosen me. This is where my argument begins that Mary becomes the becomes the head of the church, becomes the proclaimer of the good news who becomes the perfect example of discipleship. As we the church, we the church, you as individuals, you who are named and claimed and told that you are favored in our baptism. What is the voice from heaven that we hear at Jesus' baptism? What is the voice from heaven that we hear at our, our own baptisms? 
You are beloved. You are chosen. You are favored. Now go and bear, bear this child, this salvation into the world. And Mary doesn't do it just through her thoughts or through her proclamation, but she literally does it through her body. This is one of those Sundays that we need to talk to mothers who have born children of what it feels like to have a person within you and to bear that person in the world. Because in, this, in a real sense, women can teach us about how we can bear the Christ within our bodies and how we can bear that into the world and see the joy and the love and the mercy. That's, that's why this is, back in, the, back in the day when we used to have purple and then a pink candle uh, the pink candle was for Mary. It was, and, and, and I still think this is the Sunday that we think about that. Our mother who bore our salvation, who teaches us to be mothers, who teaches us to bear salvation. And how do we do that if not through love? As we hear that we are favored and that we are loved, so too do we go out into the world and we tell the world, God loves you, God chooses you, God finds favor in you. She becomes the example of the church that we all, you know, as we ponder the, 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 the cosmic reality of a God made flesh in our world, confronted with our brokenness, confronted with our sin, confronted with how far we have fallen short and told that we the church will proclaim love into the world. Is that good news or is that burden? And we look to the example of Mary who teaches us to say, let it be, let it be so. Let this happen through us and in us and for the sake of the world. This young girl who teaches the church what we should be, bearers of Christ, not just in our words, and not just in our work, but I saw also in our very selves, people should look at us and God help us, we have fallen so short of that. The world should be able to look at us and to see love through us as love came through Mary. Um, that's, that's, it's just one of those times where we have to think about, to think about ministry, to think about discipleship, to think about how we have been touched and that how we can go out into the world so that the world can see that same love and to see that hope. And, and, and in the messiness of life, in the messiness, it's where God chooses to be in the fleshiness of it all. How is God gonna become flesh? The way we all become flesh, through a, through a woman, right? We'll take upon our flesh and bear that love, that Emmanuel, God with us in the world, not just in some distant heaven, but as real as we are real, as fleshy as we are fleshy and chooses us and loves us. This is one of those days, as you think about the mother of our Lord, as you think about Mother Mary, as you think about her and how she is chosen and how she 
bears Christ into the world. I think this is one of the Sundays that I'm asking you to do. I do it fairly often, but particularly this day. This is the day to hear the voice from heaven say to you, the watcher of this video, to you, the church, to me, Matt Miller, you are favored, you are chosen, and you are loved, right? That's not a, I don't say that with any sort of qualifiers. I'm not saying you could be loved or you might be loved or you will be loved. I'm saying in the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are favored. You are chosen and you are loved. So now the question is, is how will you respond? How will you respond to that love? And today we look to a teenaged girl who looks at that gospel and says, let it be, let it be so, let this be true. And I know, I know there are some of you who struggle with that. I know that you struggle with Am I lovable? I'm telling you, you are, because this is the day we hear from God as we bear this Christ within ourselves. You are favored. You are. So let it be so in your lives. God's peace. I'll see you later. Almost Merry Christmas. Blessed Advent.